today. I want to talk about nail myths and misinformation and the weird marketing or whatever it is that's going on. I want to talk about this. These myths and the misinformation that's floating around out there right now, it's nothing new. These are things that come and go every few years. And it seems like as soon as the myth is busted, if you will, or it's proven to be false information, something else pops up and then we focus on that. And it's like this cycle of nail misinformation and myths out there. Right now we're in the cycle of nail lamps cause cancer and that is really what inspired me to make this video. That and because in the last video I posted I was reacting to some short form content and I came across a lot of or some I should say I came across a fair amount of incorrect information, mistaken or misinformation, and myths that are being retold as a fact. The one that's coming to mind right now specifically is that gel or whatever new product is healthier than whatever old product. Gel is healthier than acrylic. Dip is healthier than acrylic. Whatever. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Not the same. That's where my brain is at, and that's why we're making this video. So that being said, I am a nail tech. I've been a nail tech since 2016? April of 2016? I think? I have experience. I work on clients. I use products. I do my research. I educate myself. Let's, let's, let's get in to the misinformation, shall we? So let's start out with one of the ones that spearheaded this whole video and one of the most common nail myths that I hear even from my clients today and I have to re-educate them about this. Gel is healthier than acrylic or whatever product is healthier than whatever product. I think this is some sort of weird marketing technique that salons started using when gel first started coming out. A way to get clients to switch to gel to be able to charge more for gel. Telling them, oh, switch from acrylic, it's healthier for your nails. It's not. It makes no difference. You got to do the same prep. You are still putting product on the nail. You are still buffing the nail. If you're doing an extension, you're still extending the nail. It makes no difference. There is no one product that is going to be better than the other across the board. This is personal choice. This is what the client needs. There is, there is no one is healthier than the other. One is better than the other or better for you than the other. The only people who need to worry about if what products they're using are people who have allergies. So if you know you have an allergy to most acrylics, talk to your nail tech about what products they're using and try to find out specifically what ingredient it is that you're allergic to so that your nail tech can provide the proper products for you. That would be the only better for you case is if you are somebody with an allergy to nail products. Figure out what the allergen is and your nail tech can work with you, if possible. Some some allergies are just, there is no product, unfortunately. Also, an acrylic tech versus a gel tech does not make a difference. That's probably the tech's preference. I have done both. I've used gel, I've used acrylic, I went back to gel. Mostly my reasoning for going to gel is because I was working, I was the only nail tech in a tattoo space and most of the people coming in weren't expecting a nail salon smell, which is what acrylic is. Even the like unscented or the fragrance free monomer like still has a bit of a smell in an enclosed space in my opinion. So I just figured it better to cut that out completely and use products that don't have so much of a smell. Other techs just prefer to work with gel or acrylic or poly gel, whatever, dip powder even, acrylic. That's just the product they prefer to work with. Now, a really good tech, in my opinion, will, whatever they're using, will have something of the other variety. So I'm a gel tech. I use all gel products. I still have clear acrylic and a small bottle of monomer just in case. You never know. All of these products do different things on the nails. Acrylic is going to be the strongest, least flexible product on the nail. It is possible that I will have a client who requires that. They might just require that stiffness. Most of my clients 
really prefer the softness of gels because it makes it a little bit more flexible. There's less lifting. That's what they like. That's what works for them. That doesn't mean that's going to work for everybody. Vice versa, an acrylic tech will probably have a small pot of like a builder or a structure gel or even a builder in a bottle or something. She just in case, just in case they have that client who all of their other clients wear the acrylic, but they have that one client who just can't manage with acrylic and needs the softness of a gel. That's why I have acrylic. Well, also because I had acrylic, but also like I keep it around just in case. So, so, so in short, one is not better than the other. One is not healthier than the other or better for you than the other. It depends on the client's needs, on what the tech wants to work with, on the setting they're in, so many things but one is not healthier then. So let's stop saying that. Just because you switch from acrylic to gel isn't doesn't mean it's gonna be better for your nail. It might be better for you as a person and your lifestyle or the kind of nails you have, but it's not better for the health of your nails. Next, and this is also uh, similar lines. Product ruins your acrylic ruins your nails gel ruins your nails polish ruins your nails gel polish ruins your nails dip powder ruins your nails all of these things ruin your nails that my friend is false that is a myth that is incorrect if somebody says to you oh i don't get my nails done anymore the acrylics ruined my nails what that means they went to a tech that ruined their nails. That means that they didn't take care of their nails or that means they removed their nails improperly. The product is not ruining your nails. Improper application, so over filing the nail, taking off as much of the nail plate as possible to get as close to the natural nail bed as possible so that it adheres as good as possible, that's damaging your nail. Removing product with another tip or dental floss, that, that is causing damage. And those are things that are on your tech. So if your tech is doing that and you think your nails are getting damaged because you're getting your nails done, you need a different nail tech. If your nail tech isn't doing any of those things, if your nail tech is prepping your nails properly and isn't taking all the layers off of your nail plate and isn't removing old product with another tip or a dental floss, if your nail tech isn't doing those things and is taking good care of your nails, then there is the possibility that you are not maintaining your nails well once you leave the salon. Remember, the nail tech is only with you two, three, maybe four hours every three so weeks. You have your nails 24 seven, my friends. You've got some responsibility too. <laughs> if you're using your nails as grubby little tools and not taking care of your nails, that's going to cause damage. So if you're opening soda cans and cleaning and jamming your hands into walls when you're cleaning and using your nails to pull laundry, wet laundry out of the washer and using your nails to pull up your leggings or tight jeans or pantyhose. If you're not applying cuticle oil every day, my friends, you're causing the damage yourself. It's not the product. Stop it. E-files ruin nails. Yes, 100% e-files can ruin nails, but similarly to improper application of product, e-files are 100% safe when used by somebody who understands and has the knowledge of how they work. And how they work on your nails. If you're inexperienced, if you've never used an e-file before, they can ruin your nails and be very dangerous. But a nail tech who's been trained, who's been doing it for years, nah, there's no reason for it to ruin your nails. And if it does, it's truly because they're rushing and or there should be no damage from an e-file. If there is, question it. Or if you did it yourself, stop doing it. <laughs> Take some classes. This one is also incredibly annoying and I still hear it from time to time from new clients. Uh, I think I'm gonna let my nails breathe. My friends, your nails don't have lungs. They can't breathe. We don't need to take any breaks. In fact, in fact, if you're trying to grow out your nails or you have a little bit of nail damage and maybe your nails are a little bit more brittle, a little bit more weak, or there's maybe like a bend or a tear or something that's like farther down the nail that's hurting you, having product on your nail is 
actually beneficial. It's going to keep your nails, if they're weak and brittle and kind of breaking, it's going to keep them stronger and it's not going to allow them to do that. If there is a, you know, break, tear type thing down the nail bed, it's going to stop that from getting worse and causing you more pain. This is going back again to your nails aren't damaged because of the product. Your nails don't need to breathe because of the product on them. There are underlying reasons as to why you think you don't want product on your nails. 95% of the time when somebody comes back to me and is like, oh, I'm going to take these off. I think I need to let my nails breathe. It's because they've done something at home, generally while cleaning, that they've caused some sort of damage on their nail and they want that to grow out before continuing to put product on their nail. As long as there's no blood and there's no fungus or bacteria and there is still nail plate on the nail and it's not being lifted, we're good to go. If it's a recent injury, like if you jam your finger and you hurt it and going to the nail salon that day is going to be too uncomfortable, like pain-wise, then obviously, but you can still put product on your nail. It's absolutely fine. 100%. You don't need to let them breathe. They don't have lungs. Ridiculous. Okay, this is another weird, like, I don't know, I don't know where this comes from. I don't know why this happened in the nail industry. Calling all gel polish manicures shellac manicures. Shellac is not a service. So if you see shellac on a menu, red flag. Question it. Are they actually using C&D product? No. Why the hell does it say shellac on their menu? I don't know where this came from, where shellac as a service, as a, as a term for gel polish manicure, shellac manicure, I don't know where that started. I can't even begin to guess. I mean, I do know that CND shellac was one of the very first gel polish lines to exist, but I don't, it's not a service. Stop asking it like a service. Stop providing it like a service. It's a gel polish manicure. Even my mom, even, I was in the industry working as a nail tech providing gel polish manicures and even my mom was like, oh no, I definitely sh thought shellac was a different kind of service. Like some sort of like actual different product, like acrylic versus gel, gel polish versus, versus shellac. Like she actually thought there was a difference. Lots of people think there's an actual difference and it's because it's like put on menus like it's a service. It's not a service. So don't go to your nail tech asking for a shellac manicure. They will grind their teeth. Almost certain of it. If anybody has any sort of like linguistics or like language history or something, like if you maybe you know why that started being like gel polish manicures are now just referred to as shellac. Maybe you could let me know. Like it's the like Kleenex thing. Not all nose tissue is Kleenex because it's a brand. Similar jacuzzi, same thing. I posted a, t a few TikToks mentioning that shellac is not a service. And even within the comments, I got, oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, no, shellac is definitely a separate service from gel polish. Like arguing with me. Ma'am, what? Where are you getting this information from? Dip powder. Dip powder 100% is a separate service from acrylic, but dip powder is acrylic powder. So, it's not a separate product necessarily, but dip powder is just acrylic. It's just the application method is different. Instead of using a liquid monomer and a brush and making a bead and it polymerizing and curing on the nail, it seems like you're putting down something sticky, some sort of polish, sprinkling on the acrylic powder and then brushing something on top which act some sort of monomer I'm assuming to activate the acrylic which then adds the strength. It can be done with different gels, different glues, like different resiny type glues. Different brands have slightly different systems, slightly different activator type things, but it's just marketed in a new way. And I think that started happening because of the gel is better than acrylic myth that these brands that had all of this acrylic are like, oh man, this is what we do. What are we supposed to do? Oh, let's market it in a new way. Done. Dip powder. I don't have a problem with dip powder. This isn't me hating on dip powder. It's an incredibly great type of product for at home, like enthusiasts, especially for nail enthusiasts who just like to do their nails at home. That's incredible. If you're going to a salon for dip manicure, that's fine. It's just a different application method. It's actually, it's pretty great for natural nails. Like the, the application method is nice and easy and quick for natural nails and it adds extra structure 
to your natural nails to help them grow out. Excellent. Love that. My only concern with dip polish within salons is if you as a client are dipping your finger into like that pot of powder, if you're dipping your finger into that pot of powder, the same pot of powder that every other client has dipped their finger into, the same clients who have had hangnails, possible funguses, open wounds, and you're dipping your hand into that same powder. <coughs> now, it is dry, so there's less likely to have any sort of like bacteria growth, but that's still cross-contamination and that's still gross. So if you're going to a salon that's using dip powder, they should be either decanting it into a separate container and dipping your nail in that separate container and then trashing whatever is not used in that separate container or sprinkling it over your nail and then catching it in a container or on a towel or whatever, and then throwing it out and not reusing the rest of it. Once it touches that client, it should not be touching another client, plain and simple. That was my little dip powder rant. It's acrylic. Last one, and this is the big one. I mentioned it at the beginning that now there is this myth, this misinformation floating around the internet that nail lamps curing UV LED lamps are causing cancer. This is a big one for a number of reasons. 95% of nail techs are using these lamps. So if you go to get your nails done, chances are you're sticking your hand in one of these lamps. So that's a lot of people being scared. That's a lot of nail clients getting scared. That's a lot of nail techs getting scared that they're gonna lose clients. It's a big one because they're using cancer. They're saying cancer. Who is not afraid of getting cancer in some form? This is real fear-mongering at its finest. So I am not a scientist and I am probably not going to explain any of this well, but I'm going to link articles below from Doug Shoon. He is a cosmetic scientist, an educator, he knows nails literally inside and out and the products that go with them. He is the man to talk to about this. He has videos, articles all over the internet going back to like 2012, I think, was the earliest, maybe 2010, was one of the earliest articles I found of him debunking this myth. So that's how long it's been floating around. And this one it is specifically from Create a Beauty, which is a distributor that I purchased from. So a lot of these studies that the news media and the internet and that people are referencing were actually done by amateurs using improper testing equipment, improper you know, everything about these tests were done incorrectly and not even remotely close to what a salon environment would be like. So there's that. These lamps are at least three times safer than sunlight directly overhead. And they go on to say that these lamps aren't accidentally safe. They were designed to be safe. They only emit UVA rays, which is the safest part of the UV spectrum. Even so, more than 40% of the UVA range is completely eliminated. There is no UVB or UVC in the nail lamps, and it's not required to cure any product whatsoever. These lamps also use filters to make sure that only the safest UVA rays are being emitted. Scientists consider these lamps to be three times safer than natural sunlight because of the the UVs that are actually emitted from the lamps plus the filtering of the wavelengths. That's why they're considered to be three times safer than the sun. Okay, so they also add in this article that doctors use UV light, UV treatment for psoriasis, and they've been doing that for quite a few years now, and the medical industry considers these treatments to be safe. And so scientific researchers compared these UV rays and wavelengths to the UV rays and wavelengths in nail lamps, and they determined that a client would have to receive 250 years of weekly UV manicures to equal the risks associated with just one course of these safe medical psoriasis treats. So it is estimated that nail clients will put their hands in these nail lamps for about eight minutes or less twice per month or less than that because I have some clients who only come once a month. 
So that would be eight minutes or less once a month. So you have a much greater risk of UV exposure and all of the risks that come along with UV exposure. Walking to your car, driving in your car, going out for a walk, having a beer on a patio. So in short, <laughs> nail lamps are safe and this is all just a bunch of rubbish. Garbage. Floating around the internet, specifically TikTok slash other short form content. Get your shit together. Eat a magnet. Stop with the misinformation. That's it for me today. I'm done ranting and raving over here. Just trying to give you a little bit of education, okay? I'm just trying to give you a little bit of knowledge. Knowledge is power. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what other nail myths are floating around out there that you think need to be debunked. And let me know if I've helped you put your mind at ease, give you a little bit more information, a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more power in your decision making, in your nail appointments, in your product purchases. And of course, don't forget you can subscribe. Apparently people don't know it's free. It's free. You can subscribe for free. It's not a membership. I don't have those. I might one day but it's free. You can subscribe to any YouTube channel for free. I'm not being sarcastic right now. I know I sound like it. No, I came across a couple videos where people, not mine, other videos, where people were asking how much it was to subscribe. It's free, my friends. It's 100% free. You can subscribe to any YouTube channel, including mine, for free. Some YouTube channels do have memberships and those do cost money, but you can subscribe and get their regular content for free. So, if you didn't know that, what an exciting journey you're about to go on, all of these subscriptions. <laughs> go ahead and subscribe to this channel because it's free. And if you subscribe, that will make it a whole lot easier for us to see each other in my next video. Bye.